Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. I'm gonna try to do a live again um, this weekend. That's backwards on the phone. Hold on. Ugh. There we go. I normally try to get that before I start the video. I'm going to try to go live again on the uh, laptop this week, and I thought that was pretty cool, and I want to be able to answer questions as they come in um, on different topics. I just watched a video from Bob Barber, and he made a comment which I completely agree with, and that is, the Saints, it's almost your time. You are galvanizing right now and you're sticking to your guns and I'm not going to stop you. Um, the rapture is going to occur, but your time is next. And uh, it's not like, I don't want anybody to think that nobody's better than you. We're all going to heaven. We're going to, we're going to heaven. There's going to be a rapture and then there's going to be this huge gathering. You see the rapture of first Thessalonians and you see this huge gathering of second Thessalonians. It has to be, that is the way it is. And your time is almost here. You know about the mark. You are galvanized about that. And, and you've even made comments that if you've taken this thing three years ago that, uh, you know, you're going to hell. You've made these comments that if you don't be good, you're going to lose your salvation. Y you are like Peter who walked out on the water. Peter, in this instance, now I'm not saying he's a tribulation saint. I'm going to tell anybody out there that they are. But when he walked out onto the water, because Jesus was walking on the water to him, he was meeting him halfway. He was working. This is a time of work and we know it is because the bible is very clear on it saying that you cannot receive the mark because if you do you're doomed that's it you're going to go to hell and that's that is true for that period of time we know this mark is not going to be brought out until the three and a half year mark and i don't know about you but i haven't seen any horses riding a lot of people think we're already in the seals but we haven't seen these horses riding. It's not prophetic. It's actually a horse. It's going to come down bringing all this calamity. There's four horsemen of the apocalypse. It is a tribulation period. It is a period of time that just like Elisha, I know his name's Elisha, but I say Elisha so that you can hear the difference between Elisha and Elijah. Elijah, they went from town to town. And in every town they went to, you read the story for yourself where the people said, isn't today the day that he's, they're going to take your master away from you? And he's like, yeah, 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 okay, whatever. This is a saint. He is a tribulation saint. God loves him. He's going to get a double portion. If you see me go, that's what Elisha said to Elisha. In each town that they went to, the only conversations we see with Elisha are with Elisha. These conversations are not with the rest of the world. So a lot of the saints are here. They're watching. They think these things. Uh, I know a lot of saints personally, and they're like, you better be good. You better not curse. You, you better not be sad. You better, I think they're singing the Santa Claus song sometimes, and I'm like, that's not what this is about. It's about Jesus paying the full price, 100%, nothing else, nothing less, nothing more. He paid it all. You cannot add to it in any kind of way. The wheat and the tares grow up together. They almost appear identical, but just like the rich man that approached um, Jesus, I have done everything. I'm perfect. I've obeyed the law. I've done it. Go sell your stuff. Jesus knew the one thing that he was holding on to and he couldn't let go of. The one thing that he had was pride. Now, if he would have sold everything and followed Jesus, which Jesus knew he wouldn't have, then he would have transitioned from a saint into a bride. I personally have never seen this. Um, there's pre-terrorists out there. There's uh, saints out there. There's those. You hear them all the time. Oh, I want to stay here. I want to stay here and, and help God with this period of time to bring in more... Do you know what you're saying? 
I don't think so because they'll say it and they'll stand firm behind it. There is like, I heard Bob Barber just say this. There's nobody tough enough. I don't care how tough you think you are. (laughs) This period of time is going to drive you to your knees and you will realize that you have nothing to offer. Um, This is very hard to talk about, very hard to teach because um, some people, it hurts some people's feelings in that, um, I'm not, again, I'm not judging anybody. I don't know anybody that um, I can put my finger on perfectly. I know a few people who I think are saints, but what do I know? Maybe, I don't know. Um, Maybe on the outside they appear that way, but who knows what's on the inside. So I don't want to, I don't want anybody, I don't want to cause any fear in anyone, but I want, what I want is that when the saints do see this event take place, just like Alicia, you drop straight to your knees, you tear off the world just like Elisha did, and you put on that mantle of God, and you will receive a double portion. Remember, there were 50 prophets back there who saw the event take place, and they didn't believe it. They saw it. Everybody's going to see it. But 50 saw it, but they didn't believe it. They sent scouts into the mountains to look for the body of Elisha because they didn't know what happened. So, The rapture is going to take place, and they are not going to understand what happened. But Elisha, the one who's following right behind us, it's almost like we find them as a thorn in our side, almost, because we're like trying to explain to them. We waste more energy trying to explain to them that um, there is a pre-tribulation rapture. We are not going through any of the seals. No seals have been opened. Um the the concept no man knows the day or the hour we've explained that extensively but some people simply can't hear it but they're right next to us they believe don't think they don't they won't they're refusing they don't want to take that mark because you know that might condemn them to hell they don't want to take this thing that they came out with it is not the mark it never was the mark i said it from when it first came out, you can see, go back in my videos and see where I say it is not the mark. Any more than social security card was, the credit card was, um, the uh, barcode that they put on everything, any more than any of that, it's not the mark. But they're preparing. It's almost their time. So I don't want to discourage them too much. Sometimes they're overwhelming. Um if you've ever said you're going to go to hell because you've done this, you might be a tribulation saint. If you've ever thought we're in the seals, you might be a tribulation saint. If you've thought that um, sinning was going to cause you to lose your salvation, you might be a tribulation saint. Um, We rest assured, and, and again, the video is for the tribulation saint, praying that this gets to a tribulation saint because you're going to get it up. Whatever we are understanding and learning about timelines and everything else, none of this is going to matter because the day we go is the day you start counting. Now, your job is to figure out how long. I think the story, there's a, in every story where you see a rapture event, you will always find the three um, variables in the rapture event. You will see the bride every time. You will see the saint every time, and you will see the Jew every single time. Now, all the calamities and all the terrible things that are happening, I think are happening on this side of the planet. I don't think that all the horrible stuff is happening on that side of the planet. Honestly, I think the Jews are going to be protected, just like the Bible says. God loves those people. We pray for the Jews. They are God's chosen people. They are Rachel. God loves Rachel. Now, Rachel took on two different um, uh, sects of people. The first sect was that they were a wife. They were married to Jacob, but the second part was they stole that, or they uh, Rachel stole idols from her father Laban, and her father Laban tracked them down to get those idols back, because she will not believe until the end of everything. So the story goes that um, Jacob worked for seven years. He goes into the tent. He does not know that that is not Rachel. He thinks it's Rachel. He makes love 
to whom he thinks is Rachel, and it's Leah. He consummates the marriage. He comes out in the morning, very upset at Laban. What have you done? And Laban's like, you know the custom. The younger cannot marry before the older. I'm sure he had hoped over the course of seven years that Leah would have found a husband, but she didn't. Now she's married to Jacob. He says, work for seven more years for Rachel, but give Leah her seven days and you can marry her. I mean, uh, you can have, you can marry Leah. I'm sorry, Rachel. And, but you have to work for me for seven more years. But what most people don't pay attention to at the end of those seven years is, um, well, he has both of them in seven days. He has both women, both a bride and he has a wife in those seven days. So that's why I lean towards a gathering event for the saints. Now, there's a, I've heard very good teachings that there's more than one gathering. There's only one rapture, but there's multiple gathering events, and they are going to heaven. If you tell a saint that you missed out on something, you did this wrong, you are wrong in saying that. A saint is understanding their part, and they understand their part that's what they see in their eyes the seals have been opened in their eyes the rapture does not occur before in their eyes they will read you second thessalonians not understanding the word gathered it is not the same word as the word you find in first thessalonians as caught up it's a different word you can go back to the original greek and find that it is a completely different word and they will be gathered and they will not be gathered until they see this great apostasy this great falling away do you know what it's going to feel like on this planet right now the holy spirit's here he's here he's in us and we talk about jesus every day and we think about him all the time we're not thinking about becoming millionaires and brand new cars and nice houses we're just thinking on jesus nonstop. and how can i figure this out and when is he coming back we're not thinking about you know 401ks and new houses we're, we're thinking about jesus and it's it's but it's almost their time because as soon as they see this event take place which they will because second Thess thessalonians says so they will see this apostasy this great falling away this they will see this rapture occur it says it right there they will see it occur it's going to occur before their time and the man of sin be revealed how long and that's the question I pose to myself and in when I study and I read and I listen to other videos in, in my question is, how long is it for the man of sin to be revealed before they are gathered? And I keep coming back to the fact that it says he is revealed and for 42 months it'll be relatively peaceful on the planet. And then at the end of 42 months, you'll have these two witnesses just pestering him nonstop. And these 144,000 virgin Jewish males also pestering nonstop. And at the three and a half year mark, he will kill them and they will lie dead in the street. The three days, three and a half days, is it two days? I don't recall exactly. I have to go back and study that. But they're dead. They lie there. People are dancing and laughing. Who's dancing and laughing? Everybody who loves the world is dancing and laughing. It doesn't say anything about anybody uh, worried about them. Nobody is. Nobody's begging anybody. Like when Jesus died on the cross, they said, please let me take his body down and put him in the tomb. They want to get that body into the tomb. It's a very rare occasion. Like even now, you don't just, somebody doesn't just die and you just leave him there in the street for three days. You just don't do that. You know, you bury them out of respect for the dead. And so we have these, who, who doesn't stop this event from happening? Nobody. Everybody's in agreement that we're going to laugh and dance and throw parties around these two dead guys. That's unheard of. Even in, our, in, in any culture in, in the world right now, that is unheard of. We get the dead into the ground quickly. So it says, that the Antichrist will rule for three and a half years. Then he will go into the, kill the two winds, go into the temple and proclaim himself to be God. And for three and a half years, then we get the, the, the uh, 
was it the trumpets and the bowl judgments for the last three and a half years? It's a bad, bad time. But the Jews are still protected through that. If the saints are still here, why does it indicate that they have to see this great apostasia, us leaving, and the man of sin be revealed, and then they go? Why doesn't it say more things? Like, you know, you must see all of these things, and then you will see the two dead witnesses. It doesn't say that. It says, after you see those things, you will be gathered. So that's why I'm of the mindset that the saints won't be far behind. And uh, quite frankly, I know a lot of saints. They're awesome people. I cannot get works out of their head. They say, but you have works too. I said, I do, but because I'm saved, I don't do them to stay saved. I don't do them to impress anyone. I don't do them because I'm fearful. If anything, I'm afraid of losing a crown. That's the one thing, the only thing that I can lose at this point is a crown. So they can't comprehend what I'm saying. Well, you, you can't walk around cursing. I'm like, yes, I can. I can walk around cursing. I can walk. I can go do whatever I want. But I won't. And that is where the Bible explains, yes, you could, but you won't. And the reason you won't is because you are saved. There's others who have pretended to be saved, who have gone through the motions, but they're not. And they're living in the world, and they just they, you can tell that they're not saved. Now, again, we can't judge anyone. That's a, that is t the Bible's abundantly clear to judge no one. The wheat and the tares will grow up together. In the story of Jesus on the cross, we have always you will find in every story, you will find the bride, you will find the saint, and you will find the Jew. In every single story, the bride is Barabbas up there with Jesus. Jesus has taken his place. You don't see one single word spoken out of the mouth of Barabbas whatsoever. He has done nothing to warrant this wonderful gift that he's been given. Then you see the saint. The saint is on the cross. He is going through tribulation. He has been crucified next to Jesus. And he asks Jesus to forgive him. He has to do a work. He has to be in that tribulation period. And now, what does Jesus say to him? Today, you will be with me in paradise. Very clearly, the Bible teaches that the bride goes to the third heaven and the saint goes to paradise. It's still heaven. We're all up there. Uh, we have immortal bodies. We can never be corrupted again. We can never sin again. We can't have a bad thought. When we come back here to this earth to reign for a thousand years, we will do so extremely judiciously. We will be very judicious in every decision we make because we will know the truth. We will have experienced and seen heaven we will know that no you can't do that it just it, they will be like children to us uh, as we guide them through that millennium we will rule with a rod of iron just like the bible teaches so the jew in this instance is the thief on the other side he never will accept jesus he won't do it he reviles jesus up until jesus dies he, both of them were actually reviling, but one of them had a change of heart. How long after Barabbas, up there at the top, did it take for them to whip Jesus and to get him onto that cross and for the saint to ask Jesus to remember him? I think it was seven hours. I need to go in and study that, and maybe somebody could put in the comment section how long they think that was, but I believe it was seven hours. I believe that... Um, we know the Bible is ex extremely clear that Rachel, uh, he, wakes, he, he wakes up realizing he's with Leah. He gives Leah her seven days. He gets Rachel. But this seven years is not cut short. The seven years will always exist. The amount of time that the saints spend in those seven years, if the time had not been shortened, it would have destroyed them. The Jews are automatically protected. And again... Uh, God will put his attention, Daniel's 70th week, back on the Jews. He'll be done with the bride and the saints. He will have already gotten them. That's why in my mind, 
Noah went into the ark on October the 24th and he sat there at the doorway with the door open. All the animals are inside. His wife is inside. His three sons are inside with their wives. Eight souls were inside of that boat representing Jesus. At this moment, when he goes into that ark and sits at the doorway, he is a bride. The moment that door shuts on October the 31st, boom, the door shuts. He becomes a saint. The moment he walks off of that boat one year and 10 days later, he is a Jew. He is in the world. The Jews will stay here. On the, There's only two groups. How many groups, I don't know. How often will there be a gathering, I don't know. I know there's one rapture. I know there's at least two because I've listened to um, Wayne over at... Uh, uh, Wayne is going to be mad. We are the overcomers. Got it. Uh, Wayne over, we are the overcomers. And he makes a good argument for at least two gatherings. And I've heard others say as many as seven. I don't know. Um, but I think that this group that appears, just like you read in Revelation, is so massive that no man can count. It's huge. It's, it's, it's uncountable. So many people. So... You see in, in every story where there's a rapture event, you can figure out who the bride is, you can figure out who the saint is, and you can figure out who those are that are going to the millennium. And at the end, remember what the Bible teaches, that the Jew will finally look up and realize the one that they pierced. And they will cry because they will realize that this whole time, for 2,000 years, these crazy people have been talking about this guy, that he is... Uh, God Almighty, and they've they've been saying blasphemy. That's blasphemy. He, he's not God Almighty, you know. So they're going to realize that uh, that we were right. Not only not only is the bride saying that. Remember, the saints are saying that. That's why you will see me. Um, you won't see me argue about um, with these people. It, about um, are the seals opened? Uh, can you lose your salvation? Um, uh, no one can know the date or the hour. I won't argue with them because it's almost their time. And when they come into their time, we don't want to have them discouraged. We want them to be encouraged. Your time is almost there. And I'm personally saying I think the rapture is going to occur which it's very soon. We're seeing. I'm telling you what. There's there's just too much going on. It, it's it's right in front of our faces. It's too much going on, and I think that uh, just like God said, the end from the beginning. Honestly, He began uh, creation on September the 11th. I can show you that. It's so easy to show you that 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 it is the date that He began creation on September the 11th, and that's also the date the twin towers came down. That we might actually go. He said the end from the beginning. We might actually go 6,000 years later. Remember, I noticed something, and somebody said this, and it caught my attention. We keep looking for seven years for things. Why? 6,000 years is what we're looking for. We're not looking for uh, six, seven years. We're looking for six. 6,000 years ago, the earth was created. Six days we're looking for, and then this seventh day, God rests. So the completion of the 6,000 happens on September the 10th, actually, because the next day is the first day of creation. So I don't know. We're so close. We are so close. It's uh, getting really exciting. And then let me go through some pictures and stop talking so much, and uh, we'll uh, see where we're at right now. Okay. Right now, we are here on September the 11th at the bottom, Twin Towers. This is the first day of creation. How do I know this? Because the next day, the fourth star of Algenib skirts along the horizon, just like it does on March 16th. This is exactly 182 days later. It does this on March the 16th. It does it again on September the 14th. And... This is the fourth day of creation. This is the day where God set everything in place, in motion. This is the day that never changes. The sun moves. 
through the constellations every 2,000 years. The moon is offset 29 and a half days. We don't have any months that are 29 and then 30, 29, 30. It just doesn't work out to 364. So this is what they are looking for every six months to make sure that they are on the Sabbath. God gave us a command. Find the Sabbath and obey it. Obey the Sabbath. How are you going to obey? How, how, this is what he meant. He didn't mean to go every Saturday and and not do anything. What he meant was find the Sabbath. It's going to direct you to your year. So September the 14th is literally the day God created time. So there's a good argument for any one of these days to be the last day. The first day of creation, it could be the day before that on September the 10th. The fourth day of creation where God created time, you can read it for yourself. He put the sun, moon, and stars in place, and that's when time began. I know God created all these things before that. It was a literal 24 hours. We are speaking about God now, so God knows what 24 hours is. When he said the first day was 24 hours, that was it. That was how long it took him. It wasn't thousands of years. It was a day. And as he gets to creating time we cannot plants were created before that they can exist out of time but humans anything with the breath of life from god could not animals have the breath of life we have the breath of life he created the animals on september the 15th on september the 14th he created time on september the 15th he created all of the animals and they had the breath of life what do you think he created them out of he created them out of the dirt as well. He created them as full-grown animals, not as little babies. Don't know how to get food. They are full-grown animals already knowing what they needed to know. And then Adam, he created on the sixth day. And Eve as well. Satan was so furious about this creation because we looked like God. Satan had to have known what Jesus looked like before he began creation. Again, Jesus was here long before Jesus created it. Jesus has been here from eternity past to eternity future. The, the angels, all angels, were created as a host in heaven. And they could go anywhere in heaven. Earth is a place that they could go. So the earth was here. A third of the angels, Satan rallied a third of the angels, very jealous, he's a very jealous being. He had it all, he had it all, but he could not attain salvation. We can attain salvation, and only us. The image of God can only attain salvation. The devil and a third of those angels, including all the hosts of heaven, cannot attain salvation. They worship God because they were created. We worship God because we were saved. So, on the 15th is another high watch day. This is Rosh Hashanah. This is the first day after creation. This would be a Thursday, what we would call a Thursday. It would be Tishri 1, September the 15th. It is always September the 15th because this four-star Algenib always skirts along the horizon and marks the last Sabbath of this six-month period. It is exactly the calendar is exactly 364 days. It is not 365 and a quarter because we do not have 24 hours in a day. We have 23 hours and 56 minutes. If you take those four minutes, multiply it by 364, you will see your extra day and a quarter. The next high watch day is the last day of creation. Now, this is a high watch day, September the 15th, Tishri 3. This is the day God rested from all his work. Does not it make sense that at the end of 6,000 years, that this also would be a day that God rested from all of his work of salvation, of bringing people into heaven? That's another six years ago, the Revelation 12 sign occurred. It occurred right there on September the 23rd. Tishri, the Day of Atonement, after the 10 days of awe, September the 24th, is Yom Kippur. The Revelation 12 sign occurred six years ago. Not seven, six. Because 
That's the number of man. That's the number of the years from creation till now. It is 6,000 years, and it was six years ago that this happened. So I personally think that at some point here, just like Rachel, seven days, just like I believe the thief on the cross, seven hours, I believe that uh, right here at the end of six days, coming into the seventh day of like I said, seven years, another another seven years will be the end of the um, Jubilee. I believe there's two Jubilees running side by side, one at creation and one seven years later as Adam sins in the second month and 17th day. So we have them running simultaneously. The same thing with this Sabbath that I just showed you. The Sabbath is Saturday, right? But it's not. It's the last Sabbath when the fourth star of Algenib skirts along the horizon, which is a Wednesday. So there are two Sabbaths running simultaneously. All right. Tabernacles begins on September the 29th. And then that's also the day Jesus is born. I cannot assign Jesus' birthday anywhere else because when I do, he gets circumcised. Remember, there's seven days for the Feast of Tabernacles and then the great eighth day. The great eighth day is the day Jesus was circumcised and named. So it's hard to get away from that. And then again, we have Mary conceiving on Christmas Day, on uh, you know New Year, uh, Christmas Eve night, 24th, 25th. So, I mean, did we celebrate Jesus' birthday all these hundreds of years by mistake? No. Did God make a mistake in letting uh, this group of people assemble the Bible uh, a thousand years ago, however long a year? No. God is in charge. The amount of books that are in the Bible are what's supposed to be in the Bible. Not one more book belongs in the Bible. Our Bible is a book of salvation. All the other books that I talk about are just explanatory. They explain a little bit more detail on the event that took place. And you can glean from that. I know that the day that, um, where is it at? I know the day that Methuselah died was on October the 24th because of those other books. We know from our Bible that God told him to get into the ark and in yet seven days I will flood the earth. Well, when I read the other book, I found out that that's also the day Methuselah died. And the reason God waited those seven days was because Methuselah said, please, don't let me die during the flood to be counted amongst all of these Nephilim, the fallen angels that uh, had relations with human women and this offspring, these giants. I don't want, I don't want to be counted amongst them. So God he dies. He dies seven days before. And Noah buries his grandfather and then goes into the ark on the 24th and sits there and waits for seven days. Seven days is a period of time that the Bible indicates that we are to mourn somebody's death. So, again, let me go back here real quick and reiterate this. Right now, we are in a lull. Let's see, it's August 31st. So a little one is August 15th, so add 16. It's now a little 16 or 17. I haven't, I don't have it on here because there's no event that I can find. But a little 16 or 17. We are coming up to a little 28. That's what we're looking for. September the 11th, the first day of creation. That as a really high rapture, uh, rapture watch day. And then for the saints, I'm looking at September the 17th, the day God rested from all his work. Imagine, imagine God 6,000 years ago. Of course, he's God. He knows everything. He doesn't, there is nothing that he doesn't already know. He knew everything. He knew whom he would choose to each group that we choose. But thank God that he chose us out of the lake of fire. We were all destined for the lake of fire, every single one of us. Not a single one of us deserves to go to heaven except by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's it. There's the only way there. There is no other way. And the entire world, when they see this rapture event, are going to be scrambling to our videos and to the Bible to try to figure it. Because I can promise you, there is no other book. There is no other book that was written that long ago that has fulfilled over 1,800 prophecies. 
not one single book. Nostradamus, uh, Buddha, Mohammed, none of them, none of them have given us 1,800, over 1,800 prophecies fulfilled. So they will pick up a Bible, I promise you, when they see this. This is not going to be a little quiet event, a bleep. It's not. It's going to be massive, and it's going to be like no other time the world has ever seen. And they, this group of people are just going to spark out of here, boom, out of here. And right in front of them, some households, none will go. Some households, all will go. Some households, part will, you know, two out of five will go, and the rest will see. If you see me go, and if you've told people that, and I'm begging you, tell people that Jesus is the only way. Of course, that's the first thing we say. The blood of Christ is the only way into heaven. A free gift that he's offering. The Bible literally translates to good news. And if you see me go, and if they've heard that from you, and they hear that in these videos, and I tell them, go get a Bible now, their understanding of the Bible will be double what ours is. While we are finally beginning to figure out that there's more than one rapture, there was a time, I remember, I've been doing this for a little while, so there's a time where it was either rapture or you were going to get beat up for seven years and then thrown into hell, which never sat well with me. It made no sense. Why waste time beating us up for seven years and then casting us into hell at this uh, judgment throne? Why do that? No. He wants people to know who he is, and he has been silent. He's given us everything he's going to give us in the word, and that's all we needed this far. But here towards the end, he's starting to say, all right, it's time to wake up. Let's put all these things. Have you ever seen the Revelation 12 sign from Patrick? The guy has found like 30 different things that are all appearing in um the revelation in 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 the in the uh, revelation what's her name oh my the virgo sorry in virgo how how is that how is that even possible that god just like i said god moved these people to assemble the bible exactly as it is god moved these people to name these stars exactly as they are 50 years ago 150 years ago they named these stars their own personal name this God made this amateur astronomer find this star. Was it Yoshimuri? How, he finds it, right? The greatest telescopes on planet Earth, the greatest telescopes on planet Earth can't find this thing, but this guy finds it. And his name literally, I, you have to go watch Patrick because it's astounding. His name literally means something extremely prophetic. And it's just like, do you know who's in charge? Do you have any idea who's in charge? God's in charge. There's 66 books in the Bible. That's it. No more belong in there. Read the other books. Once you have a firm basis in, in the Bible and you know that's all you need for salvation, read the other books and learn a little bit more on top of that. All right. I've talked too much. I feel like, you know what I feel like? I feel like this is, I know I said, you know, I didn't think I would be making another video before. And I always feel like that when I make a video is that I don't think there's going to be too much more of this. And I want to get all this information out because there's going to be this revival that this awakening that happens uh, after we're gone. They're going to get a double portion and they're going to be running around going, I wait a second. This guy said this and this other guy said this and this other person said that and it's all, it all came to pass, and so let's go take a look at what they're saying, and then you say that to them, hang in there. Your time is coming. You didn't miss out on, you, you missed out on hell. That's, that's what you missed out on. That's what we're saving people from. We're worried about the people that are going to go, I'm not worried about a saint. They've galvanized. They're in their position. I'm, I'm worried about those who've never heard any of this, and or going to the lake of fire, because there's only one way into heaven, and that's through the blood of Christ. There is no other way. There is no other way. Heaven is attainable only through Jesus Christ. And every single person, on every single Muslim, every single um, Buddha follower, uh, Muhammad, all that will kneel before the only true God, the creator of the universe, Jesus Christ, God Almighty. Okay, let me go back. Sorry about that. Let's see here. What's next? Um, okay, from September the 11th, which I just showed you is the first day of creation. It brings us right up to 
uh, October 31st. This is the date I think I think that the seals are going to begin to become opening right here. I think the Antichrist is going to reveal himself very quickly after we're gone. And I think that they're, of course, are going to see us go. And so I think perhaps now this October the 31st is the same day that the flood, be, uh, the flood began. It is also the same day that Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. They sinned in the second month of the 17th day. I've showed you that before. It is exactly 50 days from September the 11th. So September the 11th, just, what is it, 11 days away? It's very close. Uh, Tim Foster, uh, he does a lot of good, uh, I like his posts. He does a lot of good stuff. And, and this is, again, what I was just telling you. Remind them of these things and charge them before God not to quarrel about words, which does no good but only ruins the hearers. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. If you find someone that thinks we're in the seals or that you can lose your salvation or that um, that you uh, that the rapture either has already occurred sometime before or it's going to occur sometime in the future and that no man can know the day or the hour, all those things wrapped up, don't argue with them because we don't want them to be that disappointed after the rapture because now it's their turn to begin trying to find it. Now, I'm telling you this, <laughs> I'm telling you this, you think the saints are mockers and scoffers, the ones who think you can lose your salvation and the ones that uh, think that the seals are already opened and they're, they're so confident and it's hard not to listen to them because they're just so confident. I know some good channels. I'm subscribed to a couple of them. Um, they're just thoroughly convinced. And, and, and what do you suppose, as much as, as studious as they are and as much as they know, what do you suppose... Um, their mindset's going to be the moment the rapture does occur and they're still here. They're going to wake up. They're going to wake up and they're going to start screaming this from the, mount, uh, the mountaintops. And if they don't, the rocks will scream out. They will start saying, they, they're not going to start saying, oh, we, we messed up. They were right. We were wrong. We're doomed. No, they're going to start studying and searching because now it's their turn. And guess what? They're going to have mockers like nobody's business. They're going to have those people who are going into the millennium saying, it's it. It's done. Our only hope now is to go into the millennium. There's no other rapture. There's no other gathering. It's done. And they're going to hear what we're hearing now. So don't be too hard on them. Be patient. Um, their day is coming very shortly. Um, so... Oh, I wanted to point this out. There's, this is a 10-day count. I find it quite often in the Bible. And in a jubilee year, um, it says here, Thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee seven times seven years in the space of the, seventh sab the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee 49 years. Then thou shalt cause the trumpet of jubilee to sound in the 10th day of the seventh month. Remember, I showed you that um, they sound the trumpet on the first day of the seventh month, which is Rosh Hashanah. But in this instance here, in this jubilee, and I really believe that it was exactly 6,000 years ago, which makes this 2023, the jubilee, the trumpet will sound 10 days later from September the 15th, it will actually, the trumpets will sound on September the 24th, 10 days later. So, and you shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. So I found a few 10-day um, examples here. And again, like I said, it might be seven days where God rested. It might be 10 days. We might wait for the Day of Atonement. It's a very important day, right? Um and that could be the rapture of the saints. Right now, I'm I'm getting past the rapture of the bride, and I'm kind of looking for when the when the gathering of the saints is. And you know, is it the seventh day after creation on September the seventeenth? Is it 
when trumpets are blown in a jubilee year, if this is in fact the jubilee year from 2023, from creation 6,000 years, and then in 2030 is the other jubilee year, which began its count at the time Adam sinned after the seventh year. Seven years later, 2023, 2030, then again, trumpets will sound. So this passage could be for the saints and and their gathering, or it could be for the Jew and the end of all those things, the end of the war of Armageddon and the beginning of the millennium. So I don't know exactly where to assign these things. I only know that they don't assign to the bride. And they did eat and drink, and he and the men that were with him, and tarried all night. And they rose up in the morning, and he said, Send me away unto my master. And her brother and her mother said, Let the damsel abide with us a few days, at least ten days. Who is this damsel? This is not a wife. This is a saint. The bride is taken, just poof, gone. But there's some negotiations here going on for the damsel. And it says, at least 10 days after that, she, she shall go. And he said unto them, hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath prospered my way. Send me away that I may go to my master. And they said, we will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. Now, remember, you have to profess Jesus Christ is God Almighty, came here, wrapped himself in human flesh, was crucified on a cross. He gave up the ghost, and on the third day he rose on the cross. He said, it is finished. And they called Rebecca. Interesting that they chose this person to be named Rebecca, right? Is this the same? This wouldn't be the same Rebecca, would it? Is this a different Rebecca? has to be different Rebecca and they called Rebecca and said unto her wilt thou go with this man and she said I will go and they sent Rebecca their sister and her nurse and Abraham's servants and his men so you see you see that uh, there is a negotiation going on here for um, the saint and a 10-day period um, and it came to pass after 10 days that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, then called he Johanan, the son of Kareab. So I did a Bible search. And in fact, 10 days appears 49 times, 49 different ter- uh, verses with all of the terms of 10 days. And you can go in and, and look at them all yourself to see what you think about those 10 days. Could that be 10 days after the bride goes that the saints go? Or could it be the bride goes and after seven days, a group of the saints are uh, gathered and then maybe another three days, another group uh, of saints are gathered after 10 days? I don't know. A new number's appearing. That keeps appearing lately. I've been seeing, I, I don't know what's going on. I, open my, I don't see 1111 much anymore, but I see these other numbers and I wasn't taking pictures of them because I'm like, and I don't know what it means. I know Jesus um, went to the cross on March 30th and 30 AD at 3 p.m. So for me, that's what that means. Okay, I wanted to show you, this is in the book of Enoch. Again, it does not belong in the Bible. This book does, it doesn't do anything for salvation. This book is good to read to get more information on, like the Bible will skirt along a a subject. The Bible, as we know it, says salvation is for mankind. It is not for the angels. We know that from the Bible, but this expounds upon that. This is the book of the words of righteousness and of the reproof of the watchers. Remember, the watchers are the fallen angels, okay? Or the, well, the watchers are uh, angels, but these are the ones who belong to the world. They've been cast out. One third of the angels were cast out according to that which he, who is holy and great, commanded in the vision. Enoch is having a vision. I perceive that in my dream that I was now speaking with a tongue of flesh with my breath, which the mighty one has put into the mouth of men that they might converse with it. This is us talking. This is how we talk. And understand with the heart, say, when you're learning about the Bible, your heart will let you know. If you pray for discernment, I believe God gives us that discernment. And understand with the heart. As he has uh, created and given to men 
men, not angels, the power of comprehending the word of understanding. So he has created and given to me the power of reproving the watchers, the offspring of heaven. Okay, so here it's calling the watchers the Nephilim. These are the offspring of heaven. This is where the angels saw the daughters of men and how beautiful they were, and they bred with them, and they had an unholy uh, alliance, and these things were born, and they're called Nephilim. I have written your petition, uh, petition. See, they've asked Enoch, will you please, since we're half human, uh, will you please ask God to include us in this um, salvation thing that's going on? This is why Satan fell. Satan fell out of jealousy because he wanted it all. He wasn't just happy being the greatest angel of all time. And if he was that if he was happy, we'd all be looking forward to seeing Lucifer right now, just like we're looking forward to seeing Michael and um, uh, Gabriel. We would be looking forward to seeing Satan, but we won't. Satan will be cast out as we're being taken up. And so they've asked Enoch, please go petition God on our behalf to save us. And this is God's response to Enoch or Enoch's response to the Nephilim. Uh, his their answer, the offspring of heaven. I I have written your petition, and in my vision, it has been shown to me that what you request will not be granted you as long as the world endures. Judgment has been passed upon you, and your request will not be granted to you. From this time forward, never shall you ascend into heaven. Wow, this is so. This is. This is so final, right? The second you don't accept Christ and your pride won't allow you to receive Christ and you're cast into the lake of fire, there is no chance for you ever to go to heaven. You are forfeiting that heaven over pride, over, I, I don't believe, I, I make my own destiny, I'm, I, I, I've got this, I want to go through tribulation, I'm strong enough. You are forfeiting the most wonderful gift by thinking this way. For this time forward, never shall you ascend into heaven. And he said that on the earth, he will bind you as long as the world endures. Remember, at the end of the thousand years, he will wad up. He will tear up heaven. He will tear up the earth. And he will destroy it, cast it into the lake of fire. And he will recreate earth and recreate heaven. And the holy city that is currently in heaven will come down and set on the new earth. But before these things, you shall behold the destruction of your beloved sons. Nephilim died in the flood. You shall not possess them, but they shall fall before, uh, before you by the sword. Neither shall you entreat for them, nor for yourselves, but you shall weep and supplicate. They, I mean, the, the, the angels uh, loved their Sons and daughters, the Nephilim, they loved them. Actually, I've only heard of male uh, Nephilim. I don't know I've ever heard of a female Nephilim, but maybe. You shall weep and supplicate and silence the words of the book which I wrote. So, just wanted to show you that salvation is for humans. It is not for the fallen angels. It is not for the Nephilim. It never will be. It never was. And that's what made, um, I saw this too, interesting number, and again, that's what made Satan so angry because he wanted it all. He wanted not only to worship God out of creation, but he wanted to know what salvation was, which he never will. He will never know that. All right, I'm going to show you. This is Shoemaker Levi. They found it. I think Aaron actually found this. I'm going to show you their channels so you can go subscribe to them and go watch the video that they put out on this information. It was crazy. I decided to go in and see exactly the moment that these um, comets cross the line into Virgo. And this comet, Shoemaker Levi, crosses into Virgo on 917. Remember, 917 is the last, is the day God rested. The last day, the seventh day, God rested on this day. I thought it was amazing that, uh, again, that what they're finding is astounding. And again, I showed you the full picture so you can see where it crosses into Virgo. It crosses into Virgo into her, I guess, her belly, her womb uh, on that 
time right there on 917. Nishimura. Nishimura crosses exactly, and this is this is what blew my mind. We're all kind of amateur astronomers now trying to figure this out, and I don't think I've ever heard anybody notice or seen anybody that had noticed this or not, but exactly at the moment, September the 15th, Eastern Standard Time, my time, at 6 o'clock in the morning, Nishimura crosses into Virgo exactly at 6 a.m. on September the 15th. Exactly. Isn't that incredible? At that exact moment, 6 a.m. And here's the larger blown up view. September the 15th, 6 a.m., Nishimura crosses into Virgo. The child that um, Patrick over at uh, uh, Hourly Watch, sorry, I think he changed his channel name now to Rapture Hourly Watch, actually. So at the very moment that Nishimura crosses into Virgo, the child is leaving Virgo. <laughs> my mind was blown. I said, oh, something put on my spirit to go look it up and see exactly. Go look for yourself. Go into uh, Stellarium and look for yourself. The the comet child is being born exactly on 9.15 at 6 a.m. in the morning. The leaving, leaving Stellarium, that box right there, leaving that, that spot right there um, between Spica and the other one. Uh, the, it doesn't show me the name of it right now, but exactly the same moment. Child is leaving out of the womb of, of uh, Virgo while Nishimura is crossing into it up there at the top. There's a, an imaginary line that they put around her to represent uh, Virgo. I thought, wow, that's crazy. That happened and that keeps happening. Now, on 9-14, Nishimura, no, is this Nishimura? Yeah, this is Nishimura crosses with this. They found Denabola. I don't know. I'm trying to remember what Denabola stood for. But Nishimura comes very close contact with Denabola on 9.14 at 1.25 in the afternoon, about 1.30. It would be just below it. So I thought that was, it's right in there, 9.11, 9.15, 9.14. All these things are occurring at the same exact moment. How, how, what mathematical um, odds are there that Nishimura and child would cross the line of Virgo at exactly the same moment. And then uh, just a few hours earlier, um, Nishimura crosses Denavola. So I thought that was astounding. Denavola uh, is up there with, uh, with this comet. Remember, this comet came out of nowhere. It was in one spot forever, forever. And then out of nowhere, now, in 2023, it decides to leave where it's at. It's like God flicked it or something. It leaves where it's at, and it comes down. It comes around through Virgo at exactly, exactly on um, on uh, Rosh Hashanah, exactly, and then goes back out. This is this is mathematically the odds are mathematically incomprehensible. Yeah, that started happening too. Here's the channel. Oh, Ricardo Garcia just did a video, and he was. Uh, Talking a lot about this guy, Aaron. Aaron's a really cool guy. I've actually, I talked to him quite a bit. He's a really nice guy. And I uh, used to have time to join his chat and we go in there and talk about all kinds of stuff over, but it's been a year and a half. I haven't had time now, but really miss those days. But Aaron at Godman, it's just a spectacular guy. And he has a video here where he found that Leah is mentioned in passage 23 or chapter 23 and Rachel is mentioned in chapter 30. So he puts a really good video together talking about that. Um, everyone that's all mine is probably subscribed to him, but uh, you should go watch that video and subscribe to him. And of course, Ricardo Garcia had a similar video. We all did it. I mean, we all saw we all saw this guy's video right down here. Um, we all saw what he found in. And this is this is it's phenomenal. It's it's impossible. The improbability is astronomical. There's no way that all of these things that Patrick has found 
from uh, uh, Hourly Watch, Rapture Hourly Watch has found them all in this constellation. Remember 2017, six years ago, we're coming up on the seventh year on the 23rd. Is that another uh, gathering of the saints? I don't know, but on the 23rd, on the uh, eight days earlier, on the 15th, is when all of this begins. All of this begins. That's when the child leaves. That's when Nishimura enters. That there's just so much going on right here. And then Patrick has found, I think, 30 or 40 different comets that are just, for some reason, all um, conglomerating on uh, Virgo right now. They're all they're all right there on Virgo at this at this moment in time, which is impossible. The, improb the, the, the numerical improbabilities are astronomical. I can't even begin. I, I'm not that, I'm not that ma kind of mathematician. I couldn't even possibly imagine. So um, go watch his video. He's, he's got so many wonderful finds uh, on this subject. And then uh, Aaron did a really good job on that 20, uh, 23 and uh, 2030. And then again, we're all just... Uh, we're all just uh, adding information to um, what Patrick has found, and we're all finding stuff. And there's so many people sending stuff to Patrick, to me, to Aaron, um, to Ricardo Garcia, saying, "Look at this! We just found this." And we go in, and you know, and then each of us, like me, I wanted to know exactly when those comments entered and exited Virgo. If you just go 30 minutes more. It's it doesn't it doesn't work. It's exactly six a.m. I'm done. I mean seriously, I I if this isn't it, I don't know what is. God said He would send us a sign, send us a Revelation twelve sign six years ago. The next day, you see what I'm saying? Like. The seventh year is the day, the seventh day God rested. The seven thousand years, the last thousand years, Jesus is in charge of the world. Talk about amazing. Can you imagine? Man, I think about it all the time. We're going to be here with a rod of iron. We're going to be impervious, perfect, strong. Um, I wonder how tall I'll be. I need to ride, I need to be able to ride a sport bike. So I don't want to be much taller than six foot. And I, that's about what, how tall I am now. So six foot. And, you know, um, I don't know. I mean, my bike's going to have Pirellis on it, of course, because it's super gummy, and you got to have gummy when you're riding. My chicken strips will be non-existent. And if you ride, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but um, when we come back here, it won't be heaven on earth because sin will still be here. This group of people will be tempted at the end, so we know that they don't have the perfect body yet. We know that they know who Jesus is, but they haven't, something about it isn't complete yet. It will be completed at the end of the thousand years. But how, how perfect are those thousand years going to be where nobody steals anything? Everybody goes to work and actually works when they're there, you know? Uh, I mean, a good Christian goes to work and actually works his entire schedule working the entire time. You're getting paid to work, you work. And other people scam out all day long and they don't. So... Um, but during that thousand years, everybody will be perfect. They will be working. They uh, they will be building houses, and 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 everything will. The guy who builds the house will build it to code, because it's that's what the right thing to do. Everything will be done the right way. A house won't cost this much, and interest won't cost that much, and you'll uh, you'll actually be able to. And they will go to work and raise families and then all the curses that we received at the garden of um you know thistles growing up and women in pain greatly multiplied in pain during child that'll all be gone none of that will exist by the sweat of our brow we won't be sweating uh, when we work we're, they're gonna love we won't but they're, they're gonna love what they do we will be kind of i don't know i have no idea i can only imagine we're gonna be like the bosses of <laughs> Of all the corporations, I don't know. I really don't know how that's going to work out uh, while we're here. And then our mansion's in heaven, so, you know, we'll clock in, come down to earth, work our shift, and then go back home to our mansion, go on vacation on all of these wonderful um, feast days that God has set up and, and, and how long they last. And then, you know, it's, it's, it, uh, that's, 
think about how many uh, vacations you get a year and, and how many days off you get because it's a holiday. It's the same setup. I mean, it's the same similar setup uh, in heaven. We'll, we, will, uh, we will look forward to these holidays, these feast days of God. It's going to be amazing. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be living them. Uh, these holidays for sure and we'll know when the sabbath is just like the bible teaches okay i think i've gone on too long um on my concern i'm really concerned about the saints and that they don't give up hope don't lose hope uh, your time is coming you will receive a double portion when you see us go you'll know exactly what happened and um you're going to wind up in heaven so have faith don't receive the mark stay away from the mark you have nothing to do with that thing and uh Go to a quiet place. Saints, after we're gone, go to a quiet place with nothing to offer. You bring nothing to that quiet place. And accept the Lord into your heart and know that he died for your sins. And he shed that precious blood for your sins. And accept him. Accept that free gift he's handing you. He's handing you a free gift. All you have to do is reach out and grab it. Just take it and you will be saved. And we'll meet you in heaven. I'll be waiting for you. because. Uh, what I read about John and this great multitude showing up is that it's a very happy moment that finally the rest of them have come in. So, all right, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Share it because it gets out there. This might video might make it to a saint. Subscribe. I don't know how many subscriptions somebody needs for it to um, stick. You know what I'm saying? You might find this you might delete some videos but if somebody else has it and then they share it you know what i'm saying it just it gets out there i think i think the world wide web's a little bit more difficult to deal with than uh than than uh they make us believe like they're in charge of. i think that i think it's a little bit harder to deal with i think a lot of these videos are going to make it and then it's your turn to search it's your turn you got a double portion you're going to know so much more than us um we've got 2000 years of not knowing and so many wrong dates <laughs> Boy, we have some wrong dates. We just thought it was this, thought it was that. But God kept us going through them, kept us looking. And I think we've reached the end of it. I really think we've reached the end of it. And that's what we're so looking forward to. I've been waiting for so long. But I think we're finally here. I think we're finally here at it, right at it. So, all right. If you uh, see anything or have anything, let me know. Like I said, I'm going to try to go live Maybe tomorrow. I don't know. I'm going to try to go live because I like and I, I really enjoyed that live session. Uh, I think we got up to 350 people in there, which was pretty cool. And uh, I'll answer questions in there and stuff if anybody has any questions um, about this. And uh, we'll see you then. Repo Man 64. We'll chat with you again later.